Hello, Michael here with a quick Redshift tutorial. This week we're going to be looking at portal lights and how you might use them in specific situations like if you've got a room like this, for instance, and you've got a window. And say, for instance, you've got a dome light in which you want to shoot the light through the window, but you don't want it to enter through this front-facing wall here that you've got a camera pointing in, for instance. We can do this very easily by going up to our Redshift shelf here going to lights and going to portal light. This will add one into the scene. I'm just going to position this in the window. All right, so we've got the portal light in the scene, but that in itself is not going to create any light. We need a light to feed into it essentially. So we're going to do that with a dome light. So if we select the portal light, go to the attribute editor and then go down to custom environment on the right here and click the checkered board. Then we'll go to redshift and light and then we're going to use a redshift dome light and they'll create a dome light in the scene. However, this isn't quite correct. If I IPR, you'll see what happens. So we've got the dome light in the scene, but that's actually also illuminating through that um, open face there, which we don't want. So I'm gonna to have to adjust that. Um, and just to note, also I'm using uh, global illumination on both uh, rendering engines. So um, you can see that I've got the window there and I've got that portal there. Um, but to make it so this dome light isn't illuminating from the front also, if we just select it in the attribute editor and scroll down to ray contribution, um, and then if you deselect effects diffuse and effects specular, that will make it so uh, the only thing that is giving specularity and diffuse is the portal light itself. So you can see now that that's shooting it through there and we're getting no reflection on this side of the very shiny uh, tube that I put in the scene. So that's all well and good, but you can still see the dome light. If you don't want to be able to see the dome light, uh, you can go, you can select it on the attribute editor and click enable background. It will make it invisible, but it will still provide light through the portal light. However, you obviously won't be able to see it. So if you're wanting to be able to view your environment shader, then you will actually have to have it enabled like that. I'm going to keep it disabled for the rest of this though. I'll just show you a few things real quick on the portal light. So if you've got it selected in the attribute editor, you can also tint the color that's coming through. Uh, if you're using a HDRI image, uh, which I'll just actually add onto the dome light really quick. So you can see I've just added this environment shader in, uh, and you can see that it's actually producing reflection of that image in the reflection there. Um, but if you wanted to tint that, if you select your portal light, you can tint the color, say to red or blue or whatever and it will produce the same image uh, but it will have the tint set to white obviously you're going to get physical based lighting portal transparency is if you are looking at it from this side for example anywhere between uh, in the RGB spectrum 000 and 111 you're going to actually be able to see it so if I turn it down to here it's going to become more opaque and the more I turn it up the less opaque it is. So the higher the value, essentially, the um, more transparent it is, and the lower the value, the more opaque it is. So if you're wanting to control that, then that is a way to do so. Uh, if you're finding that the light that it's producing is noisy, you might want to increase the sample rate just to whatever sample rate you wish for that light to produce. Um, obviously, you'd want to balance this out with your render settings as well to get a um, more preferable uh, render. So yeah, and finally, obviously, if you want to be able to see the, the um, HDRI image, if you just re-enable background, you'll be able to see it through there. Um, and also you can adjust the intensity of that portal light to any number you want, any go up to four, go up to 10, it's gonna get really bright. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's real straightforward, easy to use, very effective though for these sorts of lighting scenarios. So. If you haven't checked this out and you're lighting an indoor scene, uh, this could save you a lot of hassle um, because you're not going to have to use so many global illumination bounces as well in the scene. It's going to render a lot quicker. So yeah, that's pretty much all. Um, if you did like this video, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you are subscribed for more tutorials. I do a couple a week at the moment for all sorts of CG stuff, not just Redshift, other CG programs as well. Um, but yeah, that's really all for now. So thanks for watching and happy rendering.